Okay. So now we will see that how can we enable the server access login at our bucket level. Let's say that this is one of the bucket. I will go to the bucket properties and here you can see that server access login is an option. Just like the versioning, we discussed that the scope of that versioning will be applicable to the entire bucket. So here also we do not have any option where we can tailor down or customize the scope of this login. Once we enable this, then we have an option to select the target bucket. Target bucket means the bucket where your log files will be stored. Okay. Now, there is a limitation on this and that condition is the target bucket should be in the same region. The target bucket should be in the same region where you want to store the logs of the source bucket, the target bucket should be in the same region. <coughs> if I click here, I see that there are only two, there are only two buckets. But in my S3 account, there are many buckets. It is giving me in the list of drop down only two op options. And out of those two options, one option is the bucket itself. So the source bucket can also be your target bucket because both are in the same, I mean, in a way that that is in the same reason. So you can store the logs of the bucket, source bucket in the same bucket also or two other buckets, but in the same reason. So when I'm selecting, okay, uh, but generally what we do, we prefer to store the logs in some other bucket, not in the same bucket. Why? Because let's say that I am selecting this same bucket, then the log file will be created, right? And whenever there will be a log file creating in the bucket, there will be one more log which will be created for that. Isn't it? And again, when there will be a, a new log file written on my uh, bucket, it will capture the activity of the log file writing also. So that, that becomes a kind of, you know, a looping. Yes. Yes. And then there are certain things like we can also enable the events where we can get the notification of whatever is happening at my bucket level. So if we enable the event, your, let's say that I am enabling one email. So whenever there is one new object which is creating in the bucket, I should get an email. So I will be getting an email, okay? And when I am getting an email, whenever there is any logs that is getting created, for each and every logs, you will be getting an email and your email ID will get flooded. So we generally avoid keeping the logs of the bucket in the same bucket. Second reason is security also. So uh, if we want to track the activity happening at a bucket and the log is in the same bucket, then there might be some, you know, uh, mishandling of that log report. Somebody might come and delete the log files. So we will not be able to do the proper auditing, right? So that then we always prefer to select the bucket in the same region, but not the same bucket. Now the target prefix. Wherever you see the word prefix, prefix means a folder. Okay, folder inside the bucket. So here when it is saying the target prefix, it means that the if you want to store the files, log files inside a specific folder in this bucket, you can specify that. Not just by specifying the name of the folder, you can also specify the path. So inside the log folder, there will be one folder with name Tokyo. Then there will be one more folder with the name ISO, something like that. So, so that you can have, you know, uh, proper grouping of your 
logs of a specific bucket. So if you specify like this, then what will happen? Whenever there is a new log file, very first log file that is getting created inside this bucket, there will be this structure, folder structure which will be created. Okay. Now you can save this. The moment you save, any activity happening at your source bucket level will get captured. And the logs is not getting generated or will not be available immediately. It takes some time. So if you are enabling this, you will not be start getting the logs instantly. It takes one hour or two hours also. It is gets generated and logged in your bucket in the batch processing mode, not in the real time. Okay? And this object level logging is something that is based on the access or activity happening through the APIs. So if somebody is trying to access your objects through APIs, that is getting captured and that is used by a separate service that is called log trail. Service, cloud trail. Cloud trail is a dedicated service for auditing. So there you will export all the logs, API logs, and there you can do the auditing. Any doubt about the logging? <coughs> Both are for different purpose. One is for monitoring and auditing. Second one is for maintaining the copies of your file. So we cannot say that which one is better. It purely depends <coughs> what is the situation, what is the requirement, and how can you use this option. AWS has given you the option. It, it, it's your purely your the decision is purely up to your understanding. Okay. So yes. Did you function on that uh, log files? Anyone can open the files. Anyone can open the files. So, log files, uh, what we generally do, uh, wherever, let's say that this is my bucket, okay? And inside this bucket, the way we have this unsaved folder, we will have a log folder, okay? Now, whenever I am giving access to my user, I will specify the resource. So I will use this, uh, I will create one deny rule where I will specify the URL of or ARN of this folder so that that particular user will not be able to access the objects or the files inside this folder. So this can be done through IAM policy. Okay, so okay, so this is the bucket, okay, and we have three different storage class. So inside the bucket, we have three different storage class. The first storage class is we call it standard standard storage, and this is standard storage class. Is the default storage class so whenever we upload any file inside this so it will go and reside in the standard storage class okay the second storage class is call it infrequent So infrequent access class means what? It's not so in this class, we store the files which are not frequently used. Very rarely, we are using the file. So we can move the, we can we can directly upload the file into this infrequent storage class, or we can upload in standard standard class and move it in the standard infrequent class once it becomes folder. So that manual movement can be done anytime. Okay. Third storage class is
call it called as RRS. RRS means reduced redundancy class. Reduced redundancy storage class. It means what? It is saying that we are reducing the redundancy of your file. What does this mean? We know that the file is getting replicated inside the region, right? It is, it is having multiple copies when we are uploading the file in a, in a bucket. And the number of copies depends on the number of availability zone present in that region. It means the AWS is having or maintaining the redundancy of my data. So they must be counting this in the price. But I want to take the risk of losing the file if my file is not that much critical. If the file is having a backup on some other bucket or some other platform or on my uh, local like, uh, in-premises data center. So I can afford losing the file. There are there are some files which is not that much sensitive. So why should I go, go ahead and uh, you, uh, no, pay the standard price? So in that case we go for this storage class, reduced redundancy class, where multiple copies of my file will not be made. If that single file is lost, it means my file is lost. Okay? We are paying only for one copy. Suppose if you are uploading the file, uh -huh. it will get replicated to one copy. Yes. We will be paying only for one copy, not for multiple. Yes. So the, the pricing is less. So there is different pricing. The rate, price rate, is different for my storage RRS class, infrequent class, and standard class. Okay. So wherever we want to compromise with the, uh, that uh, durability of my file, we can go ahead and opt for RRS. Okay. This is not sufficient to explain. Uh, explain. Uh, this is not sufficient to explain all the three classes. I will take the help of one table. Okay. Uh, let's say that this is one table there. And different storage classes has been divided based on two parameters. So, I mean, everywhere we see that there are different things class. When we go for uh, flight, in flight also we have economic class, then business class. Uh, so there must be some, some factors or some parameters based on which they, that, that class has been categorized. So here, whatever classes we have discussed, these are categorized based on two parameters. One is called availability and the second one is called durability. So based on this, So based on this, so based on this has been divided. So now let let's let's uh, see like standard. In standard class, we have ninety nine point nine nine percent of availability. So that is the SLA. Ninety nine point nine nine SLA of my availability. Availability means more number of copies present in different availability nodes, more available my Durability is 99.9999999. How many nines are here? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there will be one more 9. Total 11 9 is the SLA of durability. Means once you upload the file, there is very, very rare chance. Or you can say there is no way you can lose your file permit. It will be available for you. Okay? So that's the SLA of standard storage class. So we discussed this in the very first class of this three. Durability means for how long it will be there. The life. Okay? And 
it, we say that cola will be there for 50 years or 100 years, it means we can say that it is really good. That service is really good. But if cola is present for any that means it is not available. If it is present in almost all the metro cities or all A class cities, it is more available. So presence at more places, more available. Right? Up here. So when we talk about the infrequent access storage class, here storage class, here we will be compromising in either of uh, these two parameters. Any idea? Okay, 99 so this is infrequent access. So based on I mean on which parameter we will be compromising? Okay. We will not be compromising on availability. We will be compromising on availability because we can wait for some time to access that. Because that is infrequently accessed. If it is very, very frequently accessed, it means if it is more, if it is present at more places, more number of, then it is more accessible. So, in that case, we are going to compromise on availability. And let's see what is the factor of the compromisation 99.90%. Again, very less than But you will see the significant difference in the price. For availability, in frequent access storage class, we are ready to compromise on the availability. Availability means if it is uh, not present in more number of uh, you know availability nodes, and I want to access this. If there is a if, if there is a lag, if there is a lag means. Uh, Let's say that I am getting access after some seconds or some minutes, not very frequently I am getting the access. It is not available that much. If it is more available, means I will be getting the accessibility uh, quickly. Let's say that uh, Patanjali uh, mega store. So there are many Patanjali mega store across the city. And if it is nearby me, if it is present, if, more, if there are 100 mega centers, it means there is a probability that will be present nearby me, closer to me, so I will get quicker access to that. If it is not present at multiple places, then it, the probability that I will have to travel up to some distance and get that thing done, so there will be a uh, small, you know, time taking thing. So it's about that, okay? And dur in durability, we are not compromising at all. Now, RRS class. <coughs> In RRS class, we are not compromising with availability at all. But we are compromising with the durability. And that too, 99.99%. That's the difference between different storage classes. And based on our need, we can go ahead and select any of the storage class. <coughs> so, but we frequent access storage class now. Sir, one zero nine nine percent difference. So, what kind of difference? How come? Most of the cases we do. Cost obviously has. This is because the cost is more important. But after cost, the difference is more. The performance is more. Difference is more. I use the I use the but I have to find Let's say I have to streaming or video or piece. So, video is a So, in that case, I have to use the video. But if I have to use the video, I have to use the video. Okay. Yes, sir. You have to use the video. I have to use the video. So, now coming to the buckets. I am getting into this bucket and we see that there are few files available here. If I click on any of the file, then in the properties, you can see that there is a storage class, right? Go ahead and change the storage class. 
when you change the storage class, it will move from the present storage class to the selected one. So this is one way where you can change the storage class or move the file from one storage class to another storage class anytime. Anytime. That is for resource. That is for the objects. objects yes. Not for the bucket. Because the bucket is having all type of content. Likewise, one flight is having all different classes. So one person can sit in economy, one person can sit in uh, business class. So uh, object The object is in the bucket. So when I go to S3, I see the list of buckets. Now I need to get into the bucket first. So I get into the bucket. Now I have the list of objects. I can select any of the bucket and then I get into the console of the bucket. Sorry, uh, that particular object. And here I can see the properties of that bucket. So in this storage class, you can see different storage classes, you can change the storage class. Okay? This is one way. Another way is that you can also change it at the time of uploading the file. So let's say that this is the one I selected and then I go to next and here I can set the permission and then set the properties. So at the time of uploading also you can define that in which class I want to put this file. Okay? So it will charge for object or it will charge for bucket? It will charge for object. So whatever object you are putting in the class, you will be charged according to that. So let's say that if you are putting in the standard class and the rate is 5 rupees per minute but in the standard in frequency file, uh, the rate is 3 rupees per minute so you will be charged for whichever storage class you are okay life cycle rule what do you understand by life cycle rule life cycle start kahan se hota hai the day it born and it goes to the way the day it die so in terms of file the day file is getting uploaded on s3 and the day the file is out of s3 server so this is the end to end to end point and now when we say the cycle cycle means what it should have the capability to again recreate like starting from the first end going to the second end and then coming back to the first end also then only we can say it is cycle unless it is unless it is in a loop <coughs> but when we talk about this object life cycle this object life cycle is let me help you with one diagram so this is one loop right and this loop let's say that this loop is starting from this point so this is the point it is starting from and then it will be going to certain points here and then coming back to this point but when we are talking about the object life cycle on S3 it is covering only half of the portion so the rule which we are going to define this is going to cover starting from here to the end it means that from the day your file is getting created or generated on S3 to the date it is getting deleted from the server the process can be automated through this rule but the process of bringing the file back to the life cycle it can be done manually, it cannot be automated. 
so let me let me explain you the process or the flow of this life cycle and then i will tell you that this is one 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 direction this is you know a, a single direction where it will start from one place and it will go to and you can see like this is a linear movement it is not a circular movement so the cycle so the process which can be automated through object life cycle rule is a linear process it cannot be a loop but it can be a loop and to uh, make this a loop the second part is something you have, you can do manually let me explain you with with, with some example here so this is my file i am uploading my file on s3 so by default it can land into this standard class or it can land into infrequent class both ways i mean both options are open to me isn't it so let's go ahead with the first option that i am uploading my file and that is going to the standard class so obviously that will be the current version considering that the versioning is enabled on my bucket it is not a prerequisite but if you have the versioning enabled it means if you will have the file both in current version as well as in previous version so let's say that we are uploading the file new file and that is going to my standard class okay in standard class the color of so let's say that in standard class it is landing today and now it can move to standard in frequency or glacier rrs reduced redundancy storage class is not here in the option that storage class is not considered in life cycle rule we have standard class standard in frequency and the glacier glacier is some glacier you can also call it as a class on s3 but it is a stand alone service also so glacier is a service which is used for archiving the data so any file you can upload on glacier for archiving purpose the only thing is that once you put the file in glacier you will have to wait for 3 to 4 hours to retrieve it back okay so i am putting my file on s3 in standard class so i have two option i can move the file from standard class to standard in frequent class but only if once this gets matured and it gets matured after 30 days so if your file is there in your standard class for at least 30 days then only the file will be matured and then only it can move to the standard in frequent class and when it goes to standard in frequent class again it will become immature and there also the file has to reside for 30 days to get matured and once it gets matured you can move it to glacier so to move the file from standard class to glacier through this process it takes minimum 60 days okay and you can no no this is automated whatever we are talking here this is the this is about the rule which we can set up to which will take care of the movement of the file across the different storage classes okay got this now you can see this arrow this is one one way arrow it means it cannot go back through the rule i cannot define a rule which will put back the file from glacier to standard again so this is one way now you must have got the thing clear that this is how it is linear right second option is that from standard class i can directly put my file in glacier no need of uh transferring it through infrequent and if i want to do so 
by default obviously this will be immature and this takes just one day to get matured after one day it will become mature to move to glacier it means you are uploading the file in standard class today and on the very next day the file can be moved to glacier there is no maturity uh, you know locking period or capping block capping uh, uh, time got this same way it will, same way it can happen for this previous version also so let's say that you are uploading a file in standard class understand this very careful uh, you know uh, uh, carefully this file i have uploaded today fine and this file is now 5 days older so this file is 5 days older now this is not mature to move to the higher region because the maturity date is 30 and present day is just 5 days so on the fifth day one more file came in standard class so when this file is coming in standard class obviously the previous file become the will become the previous version now it will move to this one okay and when it moved to this one this is already 5 days old this is already 5 days old so how much time it will spend here in this class to get matured 25 days more right so after 25 days it will become mature and then it can move to this one so the, the day the day versioning gets changed the previous rule gets applicable on that file now let's say that in the previous version i have defined the rule of moving the file from standard class to directly glacier this is not defined so this i can define one day also right so let's say that i have defined these three days this has defined three days and this is already five days old so the day the one file is getting uploaded in the standard class and it become previous it will the previous version rule will get applicable and then previous rule says that three days is sufficient i cannot keep a person older than three days or i cannot keep a file older than three days so directly it will be moved to <coughs> yes sir got the transition now so whatever we discussed now this is called transition rule because it is it is managing the transition of the file so these are called transition rule apart from the transition rule there is a expir expiration rule expiration rule says that the day it came in standard class on the very next day you can delete the file you can move it into so the, if i am deleting the current version file it will not be a permanent delete right it will become previous version so it will it will change its version right so here if if i am deleting any current version then it will be previous version and now the previous version expiration rule will apply <coughs> and previous version expiration rule says that delete in 10 days so after 5 plus 10 this will be permanently deleted okay so there are two types of rule transition rule and expiration rule but one condition is there your transition rule and your expiration rule should not contradict or should not conflict so let me give an example how it can conflict in this i defined a rule saying that move it to infrequent after 60 days and here i defined a rule 
that move it to glacier after 90 days. So after how many days it will move to glacier? 150 days, isn't it? So it will move to in glacier in, in 150 days and along with this transition rule I am also defining a rule that delete all the previous version file if it is 100 days older. So in a way it is contradicting. One rule is saying, sorry, let, let, let's say that this is current version, okay, consider it that this is the current version so that you don't get confused. Let's say that I'm, I'm giving, I'm, I have defined one transition rule for my current version which says that move it to glacier after 160 days and I have also defined one rule for expiration that expire the first uh, current version after 100 days. It means it is conflict contradicting. On 100th day, if it is going to delete, then the transition phase will go, say that no, don't delete because I, I want this to be in glacier after 50 days. So this type of conflict will not be allowed. We create the transition rule first and then we create the expiration rule. So at the time of creating the expiration rule, if it is conflicting, it will throw the error. Okay. So this is this is all about the concept of object life cycle. Now let me let me show one uh, you know life cycle rule. We are into this management console, S3 management console, and in this S3 management console, I am inside the bucket isotech tip Tokyo. Fine. I will go to management section here, and here we have the life cycle. In the life cycle, I can add a life cycle rule. Click on add life cycle rule. It is asking for the rule, so I say that AWS underscore MRCH. And now, in the life cycle rule, we have an option to customize the scope of bucket. Oh, sorry, scope of rule inside the bucket. In case of versioning and logging, it was applicable to entire bucket, but here we can do the customization. I can I can add a prefix here so that this lifecycle rule will be applicable only for that folder or for whatever object that is inside that folder. Okay. If I if I do not mention anything, it means it will be applicable for the entire bucket. Next step, we define the transition rule. So. We can go ahead with the current version as well as previous version. I selected both. Now it is saying that add transition. Add transition means when you want to move the file. When you click on this, then it will say it will ask you to select a type of transition. Transition to standard infrequent. It means your file is in standard and now you want to move it to standard infrequent. You see that 30 days is the default value it is saying. If I make it 29, it will give error because 30 days is the minimum maturity time. And but you can make it 90 days also, so there is no limit of higher date. I will keep it 30 days. Now I will click on add more transition and then select this transition to place. Here it, it is taking. 60 days default value, 30 for the first transition, 30 for the second transition. It is not like 30 plus 60, it is 30 plus 30 which is equal to 60. Okay, it is not giving you the value of y, it is giving you the value of x plus y. And for previous, we can also select a transition to image and glacier directly by passing the transition to the standard input. And when I'm opting this, you can see that this is the minimum one, one day. Okay. Now, this is the right place to explain one more point that whatever file we put in the glacier, glacier will charge you for, for how many days? Any guesses? Glacier will charge you for 90 days. 
even if you delete it today or if you delete it after 90 days. So they will charge you for minimum 90 days. Okay, now next expiration. So I am opting for the current version expiration as well as pre previous version expiration. In the current version expiration, you, see, you can see that it is taking four, 425 days. 30 plus 30 plus 365. So it is considering one year, one year, one year stay period in this year. But we can make it 61 years also. 61 means 60 days, 30 days in standard infringement, 30 days in standard, and one day in glacier. It means I can delete my file from glacier even after one day also. But anyway, I will be I will have an update for 90 days. So it's better that you go for how many? How many? 30 plus 30 plus 90. So 180. Sorry, 60 plus 90, 150. So I can say I can give 151. Right. Similarly, we can define the time for permanently delete. This will delete my file permanently from my DSL. Now you can see that there are few options of cleanup incomplete multi-part upload. So while discussing this is the uh, uh, object size. We discussed that if the file size is more than 2 GB, then we cannot directly upload the file. We have to use the multi-part upload. And when we are using multi-part utility, that is having the resume capability. So let's say that I started a 3 GB file and uh, in between 40% is done and now internet connection got interrupted. And when internet connection got resumed, I forget to resume that. But 40% of 3 GB space is already consumed, that is occupied on my S3, I am getting charged for that. So there should be automated mechanism which should clean up all the incomplete data which is generated through multi-part upload on my S3. So this is for that purpose. <coughs> So we can we can see like seven days or seventeen days after seventeen days any any multi part upload which is not completed and if it is seventeen days older then we need to clean it up. Okay, and then next. Now as I was saying about the conflicting thirty plus thirty sixty and plus one sixty one is the sixty one is the minimum. You can see that enter an integer value greater than or equal to 61. I cannot enter anything less than that. Because if I will enter that, that will conflict with my transition rule. Right? <coughs> okay. So if it's 151 is something I get. By myself, 30 plus 90. But transition, while defining the transition rule, I said that move it to infrequent after after 30 days, move it to glacial after 30 days. So 60 days. So it can be deleted after 60 uh, after 60 days, or I mean, it cannot be deleted before 60 days. That's why I was saying that. Give any value which is equal to or greater than 61. Then it will not conflict, it will conflict with my transition. So, what about DSL? DSL also there is a 90 day. But that is not, that is not a uh, maturity date. Okay. That is something they are counting for the charging purpose. But you can delete after one day also. Right? So, what can they They are giving expiration more than one. No, it will not show anything. You can give the expiration date anything, any integer value above 60. So then the glacier charges is for 90. But I am exceeding it. So it will be counting you for 91, 92, 93, whatever value you are exceeding more than 90. 
बट मिनिमम इट विल काउंट फॉर जैसा होता है ना कई बार वेन वी गो टू मार्केट देन दे से कि आपको इतने प्रोडक्ट लेने ही पड़ेगा आप एक लोग या फिर स्प्लिट करके लो या पूरा लोग इतना चार्ज लगेगा सो इट्स एक्सपायरेशन रूल the 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 day in the the day in 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 expiration rule minus it arrives glacier glacier gives the stay period in the okay so in short in transition rule we do not define the stay time in glacier because once it comes to glacier it means it will be there now when it gets deleted that defines how many days it will be there okay so we created one rule and that is applicable for entire bucket now we can also create another rule but this will not allow us to create at the time of creating it will contradict why because there may not be any object inside the bucket which uh, on which more than one rule can be applicable already humne ek bucket ke liye entire bucket ke liye ek rule bana diya matlab koi bhi object us bucket mein kisi bhi folder mein ho that rule will be applicable right and if we go ahead to create one more rule it means that it means that rule will be applied on this two rule will be applied on same object that is not allowed but if you specify prefix then the number of prefix means number of rules you can create so straight away we cannot say that only one rule can be created in a bucket it depends that what is the scope of that rule how you are defining the scope of that rule based on that the number of rules can be defined okay so if we make another folder by creating see let, let let's say that you don't have the folder also even if you do not have the folder you can create the rule and once that so let's say that i'm deleting this okay now when i am creating this rule i am defining one folder let's say new so this is prefix new okay i go ahead and create the rule and here i am saying that expire this after 36 days and then done so one rule got created for prefix new i can create another rule Uh, AWS underscore MRC H one, and here I can see that new one. Enter. Next, next. Expiration date. Next. Save. Two rules for two different folders. The folders are not existing. So when the folder will be created, when the object is coming inside that folder, the rules will be. What? If we try to copy the rule for the example. let's 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 do that did you get it so there's no option to select all prefixes other than these two we may expect that mm, that can come sometime so we know that in one region the files file is getting replicated auto replicated in availability zone but in case if we want to replicate the file in some other region so for that we have a automated rule process which we call cross region replication anyways manually you can copy paste you can move your file from one bucket to another bucket 
irrespective of reasons but if you want to automate this process that whenever something is happening in one bucket if you want to maintain the replica of the same thing in another bucket in another region then you can enable the crr rule cross region replication rule okay so let me again explain you with the help of some diagram by the time i am drawing this you can also draw it so that it will help you okay so i have two buckets one bucket is uh, let's say bucket 01 which is in mumbai so this bucket is in mumbai region okay <coughs> and i have another bucket which is in sydney region so let's rename this bucket 3 and this is in sydney region fine now i want to have a process where the moment i am uploading any file so let's say that this is a file and i want to have a process the moment i am putting this file inside this bucket the same file gets replicated in this bucket so this is the process i want to have and this is called cross region replication okay so there are few prerequisite for this prerequisite for the crr the very first prerequisite is that both bucket should have versioning enabled now the question is why so we'll discuss this question let's list down all the prerequisites second prerequisite is that whenever we want to enable okay second prerequisite is that the owner of bucket 2 owner of bucket 2 should have the right permission on bucket 3 then third prerequisite is that a role should be assign to s3 server to do the replication so these are the three prerequisites before we go ahead and enable the versioning sorry not the versioning crr okay now let's discuss these points both the buckets should have versioning enabled owner of bucket 2 should have right permission on bucket 3 and a role should be assigned to s3 server to do the replication so to understand these three points we need to first be clear about why we need this here how crr is going to help us and in which scenario any idea why we need crr disaster recovery disaster recovery okay 
how it helps us in disaster recovery? So if I am uploading a file, the way we have uploaded the file here, the file is getting copied to another bucket. If something happens to this file, or if something happened in this region, I still have the file accessible, usable in some other region. So this is how we have the data available in another region, usable data, which we do not need to restore. It is already there in reusable state. Okay. Apart from disaster recovery, do you think any other point which CRM is going to help us with? So that is how it is related to CRR. Load balancing, no. Latency. Latency, yes, very correct. If I am having the bucket in Mumbai, all the data is in Mumbai, the person who is trying to access the data, let's say video from Australia, they will have the latency. If I put the same data in Sydney region, they will have less latency. So this is how they, the bucket is going to help them with the latency. So these are the mainly two points for which we have the CRR. Okay. Now, if I want to have such a disaster recovery mechanism where we want to get the, you know, exact replica of what is happening in one bucket in another bucket, then obviously the versioning should be enabled. Unless the versioning is enabled, we will not be having the previous versions which we can track down. So if something went wrong, some wrong file has been uploaded in source bucket, that file will be uploaded in target bucket also and the correct version will be lost. So we will not be able to restore or access the current file. So that's why versioning is a must which has to be enabled. Okay. Owner of bucket 2 should have the right permission on bucket 3. So if you are you are the owner of the bucket in Sydney and I am the owner of the bucket in Mumbai, obviously by default I will not be able to access, I, I, I will not be authorized to access your bucket unless you give me the permission. Then the replication is being done by the server. When you are uploading the this, this uh, let's say that this file is outside this bucket and when you are putting this file then it's not you who is putting the file again in this bucket it's the AWS server which is doing the upload in this bucket on your behalf so you should authorize the S3 server to do this activity on your behalf that's why we need the role okay let me highlight these points. So in three words, you can easily relate these three points. Versioning wala point. So in versioning, uh, when we have different, ver when we have the versioning enabled, so we can restore back to some previous file or previous version. If you have, if so, let's say that the versioning is not enabled on these buckets. In source, I am uploading a file. The file is correct. Now, by mistake, accidentally, I have uploaded some wrong file with the same name. So my correct data will be lost because it will override, and the same will be done in the target also, right? So I will not be able to overcome this disaster. But if I am having the this versioning enabled then I can simply delete the latest version and I can get the correct version latest. Okay? Same thing, the object life cycle will be taken. If you have a story versioning and then the object life cycle will be taken. Life cycle, for life cycle management rule, do we have such prerequisites that the versioning should be enabled? That is an option given to you. If the versioning is enabled, you can have the different rule for versioning, current version and previous version. Or the versioning enabled means no option. Right. 
clear okay now it is very clear that how it is happening the the file is there file is outside let's say that this file is present and now i am going to enable this earlier this versioning was not enabled fine again these are the things that you need to note down i am explaining these things uh, one by one so when you see this green it means the versioning is enabled so the moment we enable the version uh, this uh, the moment we created this crr rule and that is enabled from that point of time any activity is taking place that will be replicated so you see that this file is already present in the bucket and now i am enabling this so now i am enabling this uh, cross agent replication so this file will not be copied here means all the file which is present previously before enabling the cross agent replication rule will not be copied to your target bucket got this okay let's say that there is one more bucket and this bucket is let's say four which is in uh, singapore region okay so when i am putting this when i am putting this file into this bucket it will be replicated to this one right will this be replicated to this no okay let's let's consider that there is a replication rule here so bucket 2 is having the crr enabled pointing to sorry bu bucket 3 is having the crr enabled pointing to bucket 4 now will this be copied yes, yes? no this will not be copied this is also one of bucket 2 the point is replicated object does not get replicated simple so this is replicated object right this is replicated object so this let's okay so let's say that this is replicated object now this will not be replicated here but if this is a fresh object and i am putting this object here into this bucket so then this will be replicated here fine agar hum second se fourth bhi send karna chahe to second ke sath ha batata hu batata hu 